Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another forecast here by Agent with the Forecast. In this video, we're going to be doing another tropical update, and this time it's going to be on the Eastern Pacific. Uh, Felicia has now become a hurricane and now getting very close to becoming a Category 2, as well Invest 97E does have a lot of potential to become a name storm as well. So the Eastern Pacific is definitely getting to act together as we continue Throughout the month of July, we're going to be looking at the timing, uh, cone, location, overall peak strength for both 9070 and as well for Alicia. But before we get into the video, I would recommend you guys smash that subscribe button, if, especially if you do love tropical updates. I will continue to do these all the way up to the seasons are over. As well, be sure to subscribe if you love winter and as well fall content because as we go deeper into uh, deeper into the summer months we will have more videos like that but without further ado let's get in the video so here's a look now at the forecast on the national hurricane center and as you do see there we have hurricane felicia and believe it or not felicia was actually a tropical depression yesterday yesterday in the morning this thing was a depression and now it's almost a category two at 90 miles an hour and actually according to tropical tidbits they have it at 97 miles an hour at this point with 85 knots. So obviously this thing is definitely getting very close to becoming a category two and the National Hurricane Center thinks so as well. So there it is at 90 miles an hour, minimal central pressure at 984 millibars as well. Definitely has lowered a lot compared to yesterday and is now moving west at 12 miles an hour. And then this big AOI area of uh, area of interest, we do have Invest 97E, and it does have a 60% for the next 48 hours, and now a 90% for the next 5 days. So we're looking at for some gradual development from this large tropical wave uh, that is obviously to the west of Mexico. So we're going to be really keeping a very, very close eye on as well, both Felicia and 97E. So here's now a look here at the IR forecast for Hurricane Felicia, and this thing looks absolutely amazing. I actually did have a few moments uh, for the past 24 hours where it actually does have a pretty uh, well-defined eye. So this thing definitely was getting its act together. It's continuing to get its act together. We still have some very nice banding. This thing is definitely on the smaller side when it comes to hurricanes, but again, it is an only at 90 mile an hour system soon to possibly be 100 miles an hour according to the national hurricane center and as well models so this thing did definitely have a pretty large but brief eye and we still have a pretty strong eye wall and a strong inner core but it looks like the mid area of convection and of course the strongest part where we have those larger and more intense thunderstorms the lightning is going to be located into the eastern quadrants while the western quadrants are a little bit less focused on those thunderstorms uh, but we're still seeing that strong counterclockwise vorticity around that low. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at visible so we can actually get a look at where the actual low pressure is. Uh, so, so if it actually lets me click on it. So here's now a look at visible. And this thing looks even better on visible. You can kind of see a clear area of that air, a clear area of low. Uh, within that region, obviously in the center portion of the system, you can obviously see not only we're we seeing uh, kind of open cloud tops in the flying, we aren't seeing much initiation going on in that area, but we are seeing uh, very little to no storms or even cloud cover within that region. So we're definitely uh, looking at a, a potential development, future development of an eye. Obviously, it has kind of fallen apart within the past few hours. It's kind of been on and off, has not really been consistent really. Uh, but this thing can definitely get its act together as we go overnight into its peak. So this thing can definitely go through a journal maximum overnight. And I would not roll the possibility if we get a lot clearer of an eye. But I mean, look at these bandings to that very strong, tight, kind of clockwise spin within the system. With these bandings kind of spiraling out. I mean, it's just a very good system. Definitely one of the best system, system we've seen in the Eastern Pacific this year, obviously. And this thing definitely is a quite a beauty. So obviously we do have Invest 97E as well. So let's actually get a look at the actual low pressure and see where the area of low is. So basically located about 10 degrees north and around 97 degrees west. So basically the low pressures within this region, there isn't really much. This thing is definitely not closed whatsoever. It's very disorganized, uh, very uh, scattered areas of convection. This thing is definitely just tropical thunderstorm. That's exactly why it's only an invest at this point, but just keeping a very close eye on it. That's basically where that low is. We're going to continue to keep a close eye on it as well as we get into the overnight hours, obviously later in the next few hours in this region. We're actually more than a few hours 
in quite a while though but we're definitely expecting to see this and gets act together as it does have a 60 percent for the next 48 hours and things definitely got confidence uh, the confidence is within the system so we're going to definitely keep a close eye on it there's still uh, not much of that kind of clockwise rotation within this convection they're kind of moving all over the place so that's exactly why we're going to keep a close eye on it whether we start seeing that more kind of clockwise vorticity and spin within these thunderstorms and that can definitely get uh, this confidence within the system a lot higher to the point where if it has the winds it could be a tropical depression very soon so here's now a look here at the uh, National Hurricane Center cone for Felicia. So there it is, the latest update. There they have those hurricane force winds, very small winds. Feel like I did say this thing's definitely on the smaller side. Uh, actually, surprisingly, these this wind field is pretty darn even uh, overall to so the southwest quadrant. But overall, this thing is definitely looking pretty good structure wise. Although it still has a pretty small wind field, with the hurricane the wind field definitely as well quite small as well. So. As we continue throughout, uh, obviously as late as even Tuesday, we're talking this will still be a hurricane. So this definitely does have a very good chance. I mean, I think it could very well be a Category 2, possibly by the 11 o'clock advisory. So this thing could definitely be a Category 2, maybe as early as maybe even 5 o'clock advisory as well, since already traveled to Tidpits is already sustaining 85 knots which is currently to around 97 miles an hour. And if there is no such thing as 95 miles an hour based on the conversion, it's going to have to go to 100, which is obviously going to be category two because category two technically is 96 minimum and it's already at 97 according to tropical tidbits. So either way, this thing is going to be a category two. So it's going to continue to keep this trending. We can see whether it does have maybe even a larger peak as we continue in confidence. But again, right now, center location basically uh, continue, continue to really watch out for this. Maximum is going to win at 90 miles an hour. Still moving west at 12 miles an hour. But it, this thing is definitely going to be uh, on our radar for at least five days, according to the National Hurricane Center and Hurricane Wise as well. So this thing is not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. So we're going to be talking about Felicia for quite a bit. And it's exactly what we typically see with Eastern Pacific storms. So let's now go ahead and get a look here at the 12Z Hurricane Felicia model intensity guidance. Actually, 18Z does come out quite soon here, so I would not doubt if uh, there's a, wait as we speak. There it is, 18Z. So there we go. I, I was about to say 18Z should be here by now. Let me refresh. So here is 18Z. So I actually, I guess I was lucky to refresh it because you guys would have been looking at 12Z the whole time. So here's 18Z. There they have it already at category two, 85 not which is basically 97 miles an hour so a lot of these tracks obviously are all these models have that category too because obviously they do have it at 97 miles an hour so obviously there's definitely very high confidence that the national Hurricane center will verify and put it to 100 by five o'clock so we still have actually even these models getting even stronger i mean stronger than 100 miles an hour they want to get it maybe nearly 90 knots or even very close to 95 knots which is very very close to category three status i mean this thing typically eastern eastern pacific storms love to over or get a lot of the storms in the eastern pacific tend to not verify and bust and underperform but this storm, Felicia, is definitely overperforming at this point. And according to these models, it may continue to overperform, maybe get up to 105, maybe even 110 miles an hour, which will be, I believe, our strongest in the Eastern Pacific. I believe that other one, I forgot the name, I think got to 100, or uh, yeah, I think it got to 100. I remember, I know, I, I know what I'm talking, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. I just forgot the name. I'm more focus on the Atlantic right now so Eastern Pacific names I to be honest I don't know really Eastern Pacific names until we actually get names so I'm just gonna be honest with that so let's now go ahead and look at Invest 97E uh, model intended guidance and this is as well 18Z so this, this is also refreshed so obviously they want to get it actually at a tropical storm these are model intended guidances so they actually want to have it form within the next 48 hours which is basically wh where we have it at now 60% for 48 hours uh, and then a few getting maybe 72 hours. So either way, this thing's looking like it's going to form within the next two days before uh, possibly the Saturday, Saturday time frame, basically, because we're watching out. So before Sunday, but obviously the H Wharf wants to get this to a Category 1. Not surprised that H Wharf wants to legit just RI this storm. I mean, it's a typical H Wharf thing. 
but the majority kind of want to have this within a maybe moderate tropical storm, maybe even a 50 uh, to maybe even 60 miles an hour. So we're just going to keep a very, very close eye on this because obviously this could bring in another storm. So, I mean, the Eastern Pacific is definitely, I mean, definitely shoving off this year. And for once, actually, we're continuing to see the Eastern Pacific ahead of the Atlantic, which we don't see too much. But, uh, I mean, the Atlantic had its wave. Now with the MGO pushing uh, this moisture and thunderstorms to the east. It's now in the Indian Ocean at this point, And then eventually moving to the Western Pacific. But let's now go ahead and get a look now at the model, model track guidances here for Invest 97E. So this is not expected to hit any land. So that's the good thing about the Eastern Pacific. Maybe like 98% of these storms don't even hit land. And if it does, obviously, it is definitely a shame for a portion of Mexico. Because they, when they get hit, they get hit quite hard. We saw that this year already. Uh, but not to they hit any land. So this thing is going to be at the sea basically for the rest of its uh, duration, um, for the rest of its life, basically. Let's not go ahead and get a look here at the Global 12Z GFS. I believe 18Z is not out yet. And if it were to be out, it would be like six hours in. So we're not going to wait for 18Z, sadly. Uh, but 12Z wants to have this at 983 millibars, uh, which is somewhat uh, reasonable within the next six hours, but I think it's going to be lower within the next six hours, possibly. But let's now go ahead and get a look. Now, the GFS surprising wants to have this weekend from now on, maybe getting to 987 by the next 18 hours. 983 once again, kind of going back and forth and then kind of have it permanently, uh, permanently basically weakening once we get past the monday time frame but getting it up as low as 983 which is the next six hours or sorry next three hours sorry next, not six and then here we have invest 97e you kind of see those scattered showers obviously the main area convection and thunderstorms kind of right towards i guess you could say the uh northeast of the actual low pressure itself or i guess the east of that low pressure itself and then as we get uh by Next 24 hours, GFS wants to have 97E at 1,005 millibars. There's a large area of open isobar indicating some decent winds uh, with a pressure 1,005, strong thunderstorms, uh, scattered tropical uh, systems, or not scattered tropical system, scattered tropical uh, tea storms. And as we continue on, the GFS wants to have it get act together by Saturday at 1,002 millibars. And then getting into the triple digits at 999 by Sunday. And that's going to continue to drop into as low as 994 and 93. So this thing is definitely likely to bring in at least low end tropical storm winds, according to the GFS. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at the actual 10 meter wind speed and knots for uh, from the GFS for both 97E and as well uh, looking at here. Um, and Felicia, of course. So let's now go ahead and get a look at what the GFS wants to have within the next zero hours. And they want to have this at 78 knots, which is definitely uh, not far off of where this basically is. Obviously, this is basically at 90 miles an hour. So basically, 78 knots is not too far off. Because I, I think 78 knots is basically 90 miles an hour. So GFS definitely has a really good structure. You kind of see it's really far to even see from where how far zoom depth. If I zoom in, you guys can kind of see definitely you can kind of see that area of eye so we do definitely see a strong inner core area of low with no thunderstorms or even um i mean not even cloud tops really but of course i get to say gfs wants to have this even surprisingly weakened now up to as low as 60 knots by the next 15 hours a big drop and they want to have a strengthening once again back to 72 knots and then once again weakening past near 60 knots 59 knots so gfs wants to have this kind of kind of go back and forth for a while. I mean, they have it getting back to 60 uh, by Monday. So you can kind of see the GFS is definitely kind of having it going on and off. But for Invest 97E, for the next 44, 45 hours, they basically have around 30 to maybe even 35 knots around the area of low. And then by the next basically 60 hours, uh, which is basically around possibly the time frame where it can form, it actually gets up to maybe even 40 knots. So obviously it's well over tropical strong winds. And then it gradually gets even better, possibly near 45 knots in that eastern quadrant. Then getting up to maybe even 55, sorry, more like 52 knots. And then gradually getting maybe 55 knots, possibly even close to 56 knots. So actually the uh, GFS wants to have this. Doesn't get to a moderate 
tropical storm for 97E. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at what the European wants to have. And let's just say the 12Z European is definitely not something we should even look at, but I want to just show you guys since the European is technically the most, I guess, accurate for tropics. They want to have it up to 47 knots, uh, Felicia. 47 knots, which is far, way, way off. I mean, over 20 knots off. I mean, that's... And then they want to have it getting maybe max 51 knots. I mean, this is just... I don't know what the European is doing right now. They're not looking like the best small for tropics right now even for 9070 um they, don't, they really have nothing for 9070 whatsoever when nash and herc center and other models to the gfs have very high confidence in it all right let's uh, start getting a look here at the actual hurricane models the first one we're looking at is the h4 so the next six, zero hours obviously they have it at 984 which is where we have right now but the typical H4 wants to have this thing really gain strain to getting up to 977.8 millibars within the next 30 hours, which, if I'm being honest, is not unreasonable. But then they want to have it getting up to 971 millibars, which is, I wouldn't say it's out of the question, but it's definitely not super reasonable. I mean, 978, 979 is definitely possible because it is expected maybe strength a bit more overnight. But they want to have it get near 970, 968 millibars. I mean, that's definitely... But 968 is exactly why they want to have it up to, uh, to a very strong uh, category 2 here, almost category 3. And then they have it gradually weakening uh, as we go further into the Pacific. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at the actual precipitation on uh, the composite reflectivity. And I mean, the H4 just wants to have a very beautiful eye. I mean, you see that very good banding, clear area of basically no precipitation at all and that's exactly what you want to see with an eye strong inner core strong eye wall rotating kind of clockwise this thing definitely has an eye and will continue to have an eye for a while for a few days it will have an eye even as we go further into even possibly june or sunday june sorry um, it's obviously already july by um july 18th sorry not june 18th by july 18th it'll continue to have an eye by then possibly uh, but again, it's H-Wars, uh, obviously a lot of other models don't have an eye that long. Let's now go ahead and look at the surface wind in 10 meters, miles an hour. So they have it at uh, 95 miles an hour right now, which is um definitely not out of the question. Because right now it's at 90, 95 is impossible. But they found 97 according to tropical tidbits. So they're probably going to put it at 100 by the next advisory. And then the h 4 wants to have it kind of weaken back to 85 within the next 12 hours. Then get back very close to 90 miles an hour, 87. And then getting back to 89 by uh, later tomorrow afternoon. And as we go into the overnight hours, Friday continues to see strengthening trend. Very, very strong eye wall. You kind of see these winds wrapping around from the northeast and gradually kind of I guess hooking their way around very very beautiful eye again you see that area of basically no wind at all no wind no storms that's exactly where the exact low pressure is in this storm and they want to get it up to 100 miles an hour by the next 40 hours which is definitely crazy and then 101 miles an hour and then they kind of have it uh, gradually slowly weakening just like the gfs you kind of want to have it going on and off on and off on and off so the things According to the GFS and H4, if they think it's going to weaken, then back to strengthening, then back to weakening, then back to strengthening. That could be a, as a result of possibly the shear that's very widespread and how conditions are kind of all over the place. But definitely a uh, strong storm according to the H4. Conditions, though, very, very warm waters. Uh, 90s, 70s in a better condition water-wise. near basically 29.5 to 30 degrees Celsius while uh, Felicia is going to be heading to a little bit cooler water, but still getting over 28 degrees celsius and then of course last but not least we'll be seeing a ton of moisture waves there we have 90 uh there we have 97 now right here and then we have trot or hurricane felicia right here very strong moisture bubbles definitely not looking uh really anything uh limiting factor wise shear or uh dry air wise but there is going to be some shear on and off which is possibly a reason for this uh very bipolar uh strength see you guys later